Hey everyone, today I am working on a Magnum X moped dirt bike seat. I'm gonna take it all apart and maybe do some new foam on it, some new shaping, and put on a new seat cover. So I'm gonna take off the seat cover and we'll see what it looks like underneath. I wanna start by prying up these little tabs. These tabs are what hold the original seat on. This thing's pretty brittle. I can just rip it off. I'm not worried about saving the seat cover. I'm not gonna use it for a pattern. So I'm just trying to get it off. All right, that's the old seat cover. Sometimes I like to save the old patches and I'll actually send them back with the seat for the original owner so they can use it as a patch on their vest or whatever. I would love to be able to put this back on the seat, but it's so brittle that if you bend it, it just cracks. This foam isn't actually that bad. I'm just gonna have to add a little bit of foam right here to fill in these spaces. I don't use these tabs for my seat cover, I use rivets. So I drill holes, and the perfect time to do that is right now. Okay, as you can see, I finished drilling the holes for my rivets. For these foam chunks, I actually have a whole bunch of scrap foam that I use from other seats that I've worked on. And so I try to find something that a close fit. Right about here. To attach the new foam to the old seat, I use Super 77 by 3M. It's really effective and it's really fast. Spray both surfaces and then let it dry for about five minutes. Take your foam and position it. And press it in really good. As you can tell, it's not quite perfect. And we're actually gonna shave this and make it really nice. This is the crappiest part in my opinion. I use an angle grinder with a flap wheel and this will smooth it really nicely, but it's super messy. This seat wasn't too bad, so it wasn't that messy of a grind job. Now that I got the new foam smooth, I'm gonna wrap the whole thing in headliner or what some people call sew foam. This is a quarter inch medium density foam with a fabric backing and it's nice and stretchy. First I spray the seat and I do it on top of the foam because there will be overspray. Now that the glue is dry, we can attach the sew foam. Center it. and stretch it and pull down. It's important to give it a little bit of a stretch because that will help smooth the foam. I work it towards a corner and I kind of sandwich it or taco it. Then I can cut that off and it'll be kind of smooth. Just like that. Now I just trim around the edge. There we go, the seat is prepped. The foam is good, and it's very smooth. Now we just need to make the seat cover for it. Now we need to make the seat cover template. Now we need to make the seat cover template. For this, I typically just use paper and trace it. This step doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna test fit it. Okay. So that's pretty good. This is the back template. Here we go, these are our pattern. Now we just need to cut it up. This piece right here will be perfect for the top of the seat, so I'm gonna start with that. I cut this one big because I'm gonna attach sew foam to it and do a design. When I cut these out, I wanna leave about a quarter inch over. All my pieces are cut, now I just need to put sew foam for the top. 
This foam is just like what I covered the seat in, but it's a little bit thicker. I'm going to use Super 77 and glue these together. I sprayed these both with Super 77, and now I'm just gonna attach them to each other. Now we wanna make a pattern for the top. Now I'm gonna make lines that I'm gonna sew to make ribs in the seat. And I'm gonna go with two inches. I am using a new tech portable walking foot machine. It is a GS607ZL. ZL means it is a zigzag. You do not need a zigzag, but I bought it just because I wanted that. I also have this monster wheel, which is really nice. Now we want to start sewing these lines, and those are what's going to make the ribs in the top of the seat. All right, that was the last stitch. And those ribs look pretty good. Remember to leave your allowance. On the top, I usually do about half an inch. This will be the top of the seat. Now we need to sew the sides onto it, which would be like that. Both sides are now done. And you can see the seat is starting to come together. The top stitch is a little tricky, and I think that this part just takes practice. I think that turned out pretty good. You want to evenly space the whole way in a straight line, and the straight line is what takes a little bit of practice to get. I typically will do this upside down. I'll line up the front, and then I actually cut off the top. Now we need to add the piping. I used to be really scared of piping until I actually tried it, and it makes it so much easier in my opinion. There you go, and there's your piping. And that's gonna look great. And now we have to attach the front piece. Now that the front's done, we just have to do the same thing for the back. Okay, you can flip it inside out and check. All right, all the welding looks great. All right, we're back in the garage. We're ready to finish the seat. Uh, what we're gonna do now is wrap it with this little shower cap to make it waterproof, just like that. Now the seat's waterproof, and now we'll put the seat cover over it, and we're gonna use a pneumatic rivet gun to rivet it on. So, take your seat cover and put it on. You wanna center everything and make sure the front, the front is perfect, because we're gonna attach the front first, and then we're gonna pull it back from the front. I have this really nice awl that I got from my father that I use to punch the holes. I use rivets and a little washer, so that way they don't pull through the vinyl. Find your first hole. Now that the front is riveted on, we work our way backwards with the other holes. Now we have four rivets in, two on the sides, two in the back and front. And then we just have to keep working around. And when we're doing this, we really wanna make sure that it's aligned and that it's, that it's centered. Because it's easy, it's really easy to pull all the fabric to one side of the seat. All right. There. When I trim the seat, I always use a fresh X-Acto blade. It's all trimmed, ready to go.